ramp position, if you will. It kind of lifts it a little bit. Put the toilet seat on, which is also good for GSWs and stab wounds and puncture wounds. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I can give you fluid balls if you want. A little uh, added. Okay. Good. And Zavala's got your six. And what I do here is just a little hinge tape. Yeah. Go and have a seat. Sit down. Sit you down, bud. Sit them down. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Here we go. Oh, come on. Come on. Lift him up under his arm. Get under his arm. Campbell has just experienced an episode of vasovagal syncope, also known as neurocardiogenic syncope or fainting. This was from the side of blood. As soon as we laid him down, he regained consciousness. The last thing he remembered was standing at the table and telling me he was okay. The next thing he remembered was lying on the ground and me asking him if he was okay. Not visible is the sheen of sweat or diaphoresis on his skin of his forehead and on the back of his neck, and how much more pale than normal he looks. It's hard to catch. And he's a white guy as it is, so you can see there's like difference yeah. Yeah. to that skin color, plus you see the diaphoresis. So if I didn't know exactly what happened, okay. say I just walked in on you, I'd be like, okay, something's going on. I gotta pay real strong attention to this because this is a sympathetic reaction to a, a stress. In this mm -hmm. case here, the vasovagal issue. Because I know what happened, I'm not worried about it. But I wanna get this pulled because mentally, as long as there's something sticking in, then that's triggering that kind of reflex art. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Skins don't lie. So this is why I say, check his distal skin temperature. Oh wow. Check his core temperature. Oh, yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> uh, Barker, tell me what the peripheral, the distal skin temperature was like. Cool. cool. What was approximate Diaper. like? Warm. Could you look at the camera? <laughs> okay. Cool warm. Witness, all right? <laughs> when I teach you something, guys, I'm telling you for real. It may seem over the top, but it's real. And I've learned most of it the hard way. Right. I think so again, thanks for helping. Us. Helps. Well, yeah, and, but now you've seen it. So yeah. you will never forget this, which mm -hmm. is great. So again, you, I wish you could see yourself. But you're <laughs> I, right there. So let's I wish I could have witnessed the whole thing because I don't. All I, I remember going video. in, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, I, I'm feeling lightheaded. I've never had this happen. I just want to... This incident also highlighted the importance of how you ask questions. For example, the questions you ask a fall victim for someone you suspect of having lost consciousness. In between filming, Campbell was asked if he had passed out. He said no, just that he remembered standing at the table and didn't know what had happened. This is common in true cases of loss of consciousness. Better to ask a patient, what happened? Or, how did you get here? And let them answer. If they can't recall the sequence of events, loss of consciousness is likely. On the other hand, if you ask someone, did you lose consciousness or get knocked out? It is something of a leading question, hinting at the answer you want to hear. For the scammer, it is a perfect option to claim as part of the scam.